Today I'll be talking about the Jam Superlogger and also custom logging for Rails. Uh, my name is Yu Ming, so I'm also from MOE, same as Soda, from the Experimental Systems and Technology Lab. Uh, my, it happens that our, in our company, our office is an X Men team, so everybody gets to choose a cosign, and mine is X Men. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, we're also hiring, so if you're interested in education or you have ideas on how to fuse education with technology, you know, come and speak to us. Yeah. Our boss is here, actually. <laughs> Okay, so the motivation behind my talk today is that uh, after you have built your app, what do you do? You have to deploy the app, right? And then after you deploy, what do you do? You need to uh, monitor it and also to debug errors that uh, come along. So to do this, what we have is we do logging, right? And if you don't do logging, you won't be able to monitor what happens in your app, you don't know what your app is doing, whether it's crashing, whether it's slow. And then if your user face errors, you won't be able to like, trace the step of what he did. So logging is very important. Now, lucky for us, Rails has logging out of the box. So it's like, oh, you don't need to do anything, and then they already log what you have to do. So I'm sure you're familiar with this. Like, uh, so this page goes to home slash index, and then you have a bunch of stuff. It does some SQL calls, and then it renders things, and then it shows you how much, it, how much time it took to render this page. Now, so with this information, we want to be able to like, uh, search through the logs and then like find oh uh, today we have uh, pages that look very slow so we search for terms like how long did the completed 200 OK take you see so what we need is something like a log aggregator right some kind of filtering some kind of things we can search so that's what we tried and what we realized was that it's actually very difficult to pass Rails logs because as you can see Rails logs right it's very like English like so imagine you have to write the regex for this to pull out information, right? And it's, it's very hard lah, because uh, the things are not, uh, how do I say, uh, there's no proper format to this. Yeah, so it's really very hard. So what we want is more structured logs, more machine readable logs. So what we came up with is something like this. Uh, so this is two log lines. It corresponds to the real log. Uh, I'll explain more later. Uh, basically, you see what we do is uh, we separate the fields with pipes to cleanly de demarcate, like, these are the fields, okay? And then we have timestamp, right? Because we are concerned with uh, the, the, ev the flow of events, okay, the chronological flow, and then millisecond is important because second is not enough, uh, the fidelity is not enough. Next, uh, we also put in session ID. Well, this is uh, actually a very important thing because as we were doing, we realized that but before we put in this, right, uh, realize that yes, we are logging, we're happy, we have everything. But then now we have multiple concurrent users. You don't even know which line belongs to which user. So how do you debug? You don't know what's happening. So what we did was we add in this session ID so you can tell uh, which user is doing which lines. Yep. Okay. And so this session ID is the same as the one that you can access in your controller. Yeah, but it's truncated because we don't want to show everything anyway. And also for security reasons. And the next one is like log severity. You know, you log in different levels, like info, debug, error, fatal, warn, that kind of thing. It's more for like, for you to differentiate quickly, like for example, you're very interested in error and fatal, definitely. It has a, this kind of thing you want to do, quickly do like remedies, things like that. Then you have caller, class, and line number. This is just for sanity because uh, you might put a lot of logs in your system. And then one day you want to change the logs. You don't even know where to look at, where is the log coming from. So this will help you to point to which class did the lock and the line number. <coughs> and lastly, uh, you probably want to add like extra data you want to lock along with the lock lines. So for us, we came up with this design of having a key value pair. So it's easy for you to search. Like in the lock aggregator, you can search for, oh, I'm looking for all methods that are get. So you can do a search method you will get or you want all posts, you know, things like that. Okay, so that was the design, as in that was the log design that we wanted. So how do we go about implementing this? So if you look at this real log again, right, you can see that actually uh, we tackle it like line by line. So the first line started to get blah, blah, blah. We need to find out where is Rails logging this. So actually we are building this gem, it was a bit of a detective work. You have to go into the real source code and try to find, okay, wait, 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 this logging, okay? 
So if you go into the source code, you see in this file, there's this method app called app, and inside there's this suspicious line, logger.info. Okay, started request message. Then if you dig deeper, there. This is the method that's responsible for printing this. So if you want to change the way it looks, you want to change this uh, line, or you don't want it to, to log at all, so like what we did was, it's a bit of a monkey patch. Basically, you overwrite the method and prevent it from logging. Uh, there is not, there's no real good way to shut this up now because the Rails rack logger is actually a, a Rails uh, middleware that's probably doing some other stuff. I also not really very sure, but uh, basically, if you want to shut this up, you just need to override this. Okay, next we move on to the other lines. So Rails has this concept of notifications. So it's like an event-based system where you can subscribe to events that happen in Rails. And then uh, for this case, uh, we have this uh, uh, events for like controllers, uh, active record, SQLs, and render. And then Corresponding to the event, you have subscribers. So subscribers listen to these events. So when these events are triggered, then they will do some logging. Okay. So these yellow lines are actually written by log subscribers. And there are three log subscribers here. So the first one is the action controller log subscriber. So the same thing, do a bit of detective work. Then you realize that in this file, there's this method that is doing this line. Okay. So this is down. Okay, then you know in the same file you find that uh, there's another method called process action. Okay, so so let me elaborate a bit. Right? So start processing is uh, obviously you understand. So it's the start of the controller. So the moment your control action is being called, this event will fire. It's the start of your control action. Okay, and this is when your control action finishes. Means uh, uh, it's the end uh, of the, of it. That's why it's the last line in the logs. So it locks down the duration of all the viewing, uh, rendering of the view, SQL, blah, blah, blah. And then the next line is the SQL, okay? So basically it's all detective work, uh, going and find where is it doing it, and then to format it in a way that is what you want, and it's more uh, machine readable. Okay, last one is the view, this file, it's rendering here, yep. Okay, so, uh, for the first Rails rec logger, right, we had to do some monkey patching, okay, because the middleware. But for these log subscribers, like I said, they are it's an events-based pattern. So what you need to do is just to unsubscribe them, and then you create your own log subscriber and you attach them. So now your log subscribers will be fired instead, right? So it's better than monkey patching, because monkey patching you might not know if the next update you will break or not. Yeah. Okay. Then the next thing is about how to log the session ID. This was the bit more difficult part because um, <coughs> the session ID, right, usually you can only access it in the controller. But as you can see, uh, in, uh, the log subscribers are outside of the controller. You have no way to access the session ID. So you need a way to like, share this session ID around. So of course, the first thing that comes to mind is let's store it in a global variable. Okay. But obviously, this is bad lah, because uh, there are multiple requests coming in. And then if you save to a global variable, every request that comes in will just overwrite while well, the previous one is happening or things like that. So what we need is actually we need a way to ensure that the global variable is a per request only kind of thing. Okay. So well, luckily for us, everything is a gem. There's this gem called request store that uh, is able to do this. So. How is it being done is like, um, okay, so in order for, the, for you to store the session ID before your log subscribers are able to use it everywhere else, what you need to do is you need to create uh, this middleware before this uh, middleware called the rec session and, sorry, sorry, after the rec session and before your app, so it's like in between. So that, because the rec session is in charge of generating the, the session ID and things like that. So uh, what you need is, you need to force it to generate the ID. Because if not, you will not generate. I don't really know when is it generated, but if you don't force it here, then uh, 
your log subscribers, all these will not be able to get the session ID. Yeah. And then so this is what it's doing. Like, this is actually basically a middleware now that is sandwiched between uh, your app and the rec session. Okay. And then what we do is just simply uh, uh, okay, sorry, I can't see the equal here. But basically it's just assigning to our global variable that is backed by the request store gem. So the request store gem will uh, handle it such that every request will only see their own global variable. So you get the session ID correctly. Okay, so so much talking, right? Uh, let me show you what we have achieved la, out, of, uh, out of this. Okay. So we are using Greylock as our log aggregator. Uh, these are all fictitious logs. La. Basically, I just use a random app and then I just click pressing F5 <laughs> to generate all these logs. Okay, so what you can see here is that this is our super logger logs. Okay, it's in a nice format and things like that. So, like I said, why, why, why did we want to do this? Right? It's because we want to be able to use log uh, aggregator to easily extract all these values. So, okay, the blue one is the raw log. So, so now let's say we are interested in uh, say the total duration. Yeah. Uh, okay, the total duration is appear right, but because there are there are log lines that doesn't have total duration, so they are here. So I'm just going to filter them so that you only see things that are has total duration. Okay, by the way, this is running in Docker, so, <laughs> so it's easy to set up. I just need to like, run the Docker command, and then the gray log is set up already. Yep. Uh, uh, so you can see here, right? This is 21.41, which is extracted from here. So you can easily imagine, right? Once you're able to extract this, then you can draw graphs, you can plot things, you can like, or find out, uh, you can like sort which page has the slowest uh, response time, things like that, right? And okay, so the other, and then other thing to show you is like, then you can have like the log level, right? Okay. Yeah, then you see all the ID, so info, debug, debug, all this. So if you're interested for if errors, all you need to do is you just need to like or rails log level say E. I'm not sure if there is any E or not. Okay, so nothing found. So let's say you just look for Oh, I think I have one. Hang on. Uh. Yeah, there. So, so if you want to set up like notifications for your system, like or if there's any errors, you want to be notified immediately, you can easily do this. Whereas if you let's say you do for the normal Rails log, uh, it might not be so easy to extract the values. Yep. And the last thing is uh, probably the session ID. So. Okay. Um. I mean, for my case here, right, you can see that everything is quite sequential. La. Very nice. The session ID is one after another. It's like one user after another user. Yeah, it's like this is 0AA0, this is 39EC. But in real life, it's not going to happen. La. Right? You're going to have like interlaced locks. You don't know who is what. So for our case, how we do it, right, is we just need to say, hey, we are interested in this guy. Then we just copy the session ID, then. And boom, right? You we are we only show logs that are concerned with this guy. So it helps to it helps it easier to trace down to what you want to find. Yeah. Uh, okay, so super logger is just part one. Uh, it's basically on how to log things up properly. The part two is about how to use like log aggregators properly, which uh, is also another is, is another topic altogether, uh, which I will not cover here. But if you're interested, uh, my colleague Wei Ting. Sitting over there is uh, the, the expert in this. So 
uh, he helped me set up all the extracting. Now. Basically, you still have to write regex, but it's a lot easier to write because it's a lot more structured. So it's, it's a lot more uh, predictable patterns than in Rails, you don't know how you're going to lock, and then everybody's going like, to lock differently. Yep. Uh, with that, I think that's all. So yeah, if you have any questions. Okay. Oh. Uh, have you maybe used a project called LogRage? Yes. Uh, I so the question is, what's the advantage of your project over LogRage? Okay, so LogRage is like, uh, they condense all the logs into one line. Okay. Um, it's good. It's, it makes the logs more manage manageable. You have one line per request. But the thing is, the truth is, you're going to lock other things that are not standard logging. So for example, for our case, right, we have we, are, we have a lot, a lot of security related things. Like for example, someone did something uh, that they're not authorized to, we have to lock it down. So you cannot condense everything into one line. It can be all over the place. And so we try not to go there. Like, there's, there's no need to compress everything to one line. Like. So that's basically what LogRage is doing like, actually, I feel, yeah. But I, I drew inspiration from that. Basically I look at how they do certain things how they silence certain things, yeah. So, yeah. Because like, just now you, uh, you were saying like the, like the starter get request thing is a rec logger, right? Mm. So, which is a middle way. Are you able to like, because I was thinking like, first monkey patching is kind of bad. Like, yeah. Like if you change, then you'll you break your logger. Uh -huh. Are you able to like inject a middle way before or after? Because after all the, the request pipeline is through all the middleware, like, my view to extract like, the info, information into one. No, the, 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 the challenge is to shut it up. <laughs> also, you don't even want that line to appear. Uh, okay, it's either you, you shut it up or you override it to lock it in a pattern you want, right? So, uh, the only way is you remove this middleware, la, then you plug in your own middleware. Oh, I see. So, so your, your locks are you basically clean away all the rails. Blocks and then you yes. Block. Yeah. Instead of trying to override them and uh, make them look the way I want them to look, I okay for this monkey patch. This is no choice. Uh, but for the lock subscribers, I unsubscribe them uh, and then I attach my own so that uh, yeah. Yep. Does anyone have more questions for? Yeah, thank, thank you for